continuing in sampling distributions, and we uh, hopefully have gone over random sampling and some of that concept, and that we are doing statistics, not just surveys. It was a big difference. So in the previous videos, uh, I was bringing up the concepts of of, of Yelp and right, my professor and surveys and those have nothing to do with actual statistics and what what these definitions are coming from because it, it's very critical that it it what you, when you're getting information that it's random sampling almost everything in statistics is based off of that if it's not random sampling then it you can't really apply these theorems so that's why I, as I mentioned I'm suspect often of what's presented because these statistics do work you can prove it mathematically but the assumptions are that the sample is random <clears throat> uh, or the population you know that you, that you have is 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 you have the entire population so anyway time to move on i was <clears throat> want to just clarify some of that uh we want to get into what's next and that is the uh a statistic so when we say statistic we mean a mean, uh, standard deviation, a median. You know, it's a, a statistic is a is a numerical aspect about the population, and uh, we want to look into sampling the population. This is going to be, I think, at first is a little strange, and I have posted this time a number of other outside videos to help to get more in there, more views of how things occur. You know, more teaching aspects. Um, I scoured the internet and landed on Khan Academy. So the next uh, videos, uh, look at those. I think I've got a few posted, so take a look at those. Those will discuss the concept of uh, sampling distributions and the central limit theorem. And I'm going to go over them uh, and highlight them, but that's another way to kind of get a more deeper understanding of those. So I want you now <clears throat> to write down this definition. This is what we mean by, um, <clears throat> uh, oh, I'm sorry, we already did that. Okay, so this is what we, what we just did. We talked about all this stuff. Okay, so we want to talk about next, sampling distribution. So, and then, you know, I'll describe the concept, and I want you to look at the other videos to help to go over what, uh, how they're applied, like what does that mean? And they, they give us really good, I think, examples of that. <clears throat> so uh, let's all read it verbatim. And as you go ahead and write this out, uh, as it's stated. So <clears throat> let S be, and technically it'd be like a, a set that represents the population or something like that. But I'm just saying let S be uh, the, a population of size N <clears throat> and Right now, you you kind of you assume it's continuous. Uh, we can talk about it being a very large population or infinite, but for now, just say it's size n. From that population, what you're going to do next is choose a random sample of size n. So if it was like 100, you're now you're going to choose a random sample of say 10, okay, something like that. <coughs> so let's do that, and. Oops. <coughs> So we have a random sampling of size 10. And hold on, I'm gonna do something real quick here. Okay. <clears throat> and so you do that sample. And let's suppose you wanna look at the mean of that sample. So, so you, ha you have a, a population <clears throat> and we're gonna look at a statistic of that population. Okay, uh, so the Okay and okay and then we repeat. I'll, I'll I need to finish what I'm having here. What I wrote down here. Okay, so and you're going to record that. You're going to repeat this <clears throat> however many times. You're going to repeat that sampling say m times. So you you sample ten, and you have a distribution. Okay, uh, you're gonna <clears throat> the recorded probabilities of the samples from S is called a sampling distribution. Okay, that's the definition, and it's. I think a little weird to understand at first. So the examples to look at uh, is uh, in the book, uh, Mendenhall, so look at that one. 
uh, and then I have a number of I have like a, th a number of videos posted. I might have I have three when I'm recording this. I might add more, <clears throat> and uh, take a look at those. And those are on sampling distributions and the central limit theorem, which I will talk about. So the general idea is this. I'll just describe it, and then you watch the videos or vice versa. Is you have uh, let's suppose you have um, uh, let's say a bunch of this is the heights of everybody, right? Heights of a of a population. And you can let's just say the population is Chaffee College. The height the the height of everybody at Chaffee College, and you're going to get basically a, a normal distribution for that. And just that's always normal. Okay, so when I say normal distribution in your mind you're always thinking the bell curve like that and you have the standard deviation 68 percent empirical data empirical um <clears throat> uh rule and all that kind of stuff so you're always thinking that when i say normal that's what you're thinking some distributions are not normal right they could like that's not a normal distribution <clears throat> uh so <coughs> excuse me so <clears throat> going back to the example, uh, we can't look at the entire population, but if you sample the population, let's say th like 30 each time. So you're going to sample 30 uh, people from Chafee College each time. And then you're going to look at the mean of that sample. Okay, so you have, you have everybody's height. And then you're going to look at the mean. So you're going to get, you're going to do it once the heck I had a little hiccup here <clears throat> okay so you're gonna do it once there we go and you're going to get a mean of that sample and then you're going to do it again you're gonna get another mean right but these uh, almost most likely, because it's a random sample of a couple thousand, I think our head counts are between 15,000 and 20,000 over the number of years. And you're only sampling 30. So there's, each time, these will be different. Okay? So these will be different numbers. But you're going to keep doing that. <clears throat> and you're going to keep doing that M times. You're going to do that random sample M times. And then you're going to plot the relative uh, probabilities of those occurring. All right. So <clears throat> when you do this plot, and then the, they'll give you specific examples in the, um, in the other videos. I'll, they'll go through it more in detail. This is just a general idea. This distribution of those samples is normal. It must be normal. And it, and it turns out it doesn't matter whether the initial population is normal or not. And that's basically the central limit theorem. So <clears throat> when you look at this, uh, this example, 7.4, we can see that you get this relative probability. And then you're getting these bell curve looking results. So go go back through that and just take a look. And this one, like this one, what did it say? <clears throat> you have X bar, right? Uh, average of the four die. So this is rolling the die, and you're looking at the uh, what you're getting, and you're getting this distribution. So as you do more and more, your 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 <clears throat> n goes up, and of the samples, this distribution, these distributions look more and more normal. And, and that's one of the key ideas of this concept. So <coughs> this is the central limit theorem. <coughs> Go and write this down. <coughs> so we're going to let S be a population that may be normal or non-normal. Okay, so I am in the book, they make the assumption it's not normal, but if it's normal, it works the same way. <coughs> Okay, so you have a population, and <clears throat> with a known, this is the key that gets a little squirrely with statistics. Remember, I'm a pure mathematician, not a statistician. <clears throat> this gets a little weird. 
uh, you have a known mean. Now, if you have a known mean, then why are we doing this? Like, that's sort of like, so we'll be doing this without knowing the mean. And then you are making assumptions about the population, which can be proven mathematically if all those assumptions are met. Random sampling, enough samples, you know, those sort of things. <clears throat> so for, for um, a pure mathematician to say large enough or approximately normal, those don't sit well with, with math people. That's okay. That's why sometimes you have separate departments and it's a different philosophy, really. <clears throat> that doesn't matter because we got to still do this. So, <clears throat> uh, so you, with a, with a mean, okay, so here's the idea. You have S is your population. <coughs> you have a known mu and a known uh, standard deviation, sigma. And remember, those are the symbols for population. When n is large, <clears throat> and th that in the later later on we'll say it has to be thirty or above. But just suppose now it's large. This is actually how they define it. <clears throat> when n is large, for a non-normal population, or any n uh, for a normal population. So for if the population is normal, it doesn't matter the size n you pick, little n. But for a non-normal population, it has to be large enough. Okay, so you're, you're doing the random sampling so many times. <coughs> Excuse me. The sampling distribution <coughs> of the sample mean, specifically we're talking about the sample mean now, is approximately normal with a mean mu and standard deviation sigma divided by the square root of n. <coughs> And then uh, another thing, as n approaches infinity, so as you have uh, a, a whole bunch of samples and as you approach infinity, the approximation becomes exactly normal if it's, you know, if it's possible. <clears throat> now that's true if the population uh, is infinite. It's also true if it's a normal population. There's a little a lot of caveats to that. But the key is, <coughs> the basic idea is, it doesn't matter what the population looks like. Okay, this is obviously not normal. This is totally skewed. That isn't, isn't a normal population. Uh, and it, So if you're doing these sampling, you're sampling all these different cases, and then you plot that, it will be a normal distribution. So all those means, if you plot the means, so you think about it. You have, go back to Chafee College and, and the heights of everybody. And you are plotting. So you do a random sample and you get a mean. Okay. And it's like, say, five foot three or whatever. <clears throat> and you know another one and you plot that. And that's five, five. Right. You plot that. And you keep plotting the average of each of those. That distribution will be approximately normal. <clears throat> If you do it enough and you approach infinity, it becomes exactly a normal population. And for all intensive purposes, <clears throat> the, the magic number, and I, they get to this later, I'm jumping ahead here, the magic number is over 30. And you can prove that mathematically given the proper assumptions. <clears throat> so that's the idea of the central limit theorem. Um, uh, this video doesn't do it justice. Okay, so you need to, I, I found some good ones because they're just going to take a while, to, a while, sorry, to get that point across. And I'd like you to look at those. <clears throat> uh, the, the quizzes will probably come out of those as well. So make sure you're taking notes on those. Or they're not too long. Uh, and then we'll get on to doing specific examples uh, with, with my data next. <clears throat>